there. I hope you guys have enjoyed the NASA Langley Youth Day 2021. Uh, what an exciting time to be able to spend some time at NASA with all of the missions going on that I'm sure you guys have heard about. My name is Anne McLean. I'm a NASA astronaut. I've been an astronaut for about eight years, and I hope that some of you guys in the audience want to be astronauts too. And that's what's really exciting about things like Youth Day is that it exposes you to some of the careers that were out there. I bet before you came here, some of you didn't even realize that this whole world could be opened up to you. I certainly didn't realize it until I watched the space shuttle launches on television when I was little. And that's where that dream first entered into my mind. So I really hope that the time that you've spent at NASA, you've kind of looked around and you thought, hey, maybe I could do that one day. And what I want to ask you to do is to hang on to that. Hang on to that little part inside of you that says, I want to be part of this. I could be part of this. And then you just need to figure out how to get from here to there. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and my journey. And, uh, and remember that it's just one way to get to NASA. There's so many different careers at NASA and even within the astronaut office that whatever you find exciting, I know that we have a great career for you. So my name is Anne. Like I said, I grew up in Spokane, Washington. Um, and when I was 18, I went to the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. Um, that is the Army's college, if you will. It's in New York. And I graduated from there in 2002 and became an Army helicopter pilot. Uh, I also went to graduate school in aerospace engineering. Uh, for me, I, you know, I said that there was a lot of different paths. You can be science, you can be engineering, math, you could be a medical doctor, biological science, you could be an earth scientist, a planetary scientist whatever it is excites you. For me, that was aerospace engineering. I loved flying. I wanted to know how airplanes worked, how rockets worked. Um, and so that's the path that I chose. And so I did that for college and for uh, my grad school. And then I went and flew army helicopters. It was always a dream of mine uh, to fly to space and uh, always a dream of mine to fly in the air here in our beautiful planet. And so I chose to fly helicopters. And really interestingly, as we look at going back to the moon and at other planets, vertical flight, like helicopter flight, is becoming really important. If you guys have seen on Mars, we have the very first helicopter flying on another planet. That's really exciting. Um, so maybe that's something that you can do too. So I spent about eight years flying helicopters in the Army, and then I became a test pilot. Um, now, what is a test pilot? You know, it's not just a pilot that uh, goes out and tests an aircraft that we're not sure if it's going to work. It's really just not that simple. And you guys are probably figuring out right now that nothing's really as simple as it looks. A test pilot takes an aircraft, um, either a hot air balloon or a jet or a big airplane or a helicopter, and we can do a couple different things. We can take that airplane and we can figure out how to make it go faster or farther or how to make it maneuver better for the mission that it's required. You know, somebody that's flying an F-18 in the Navy and landing on a ship has a really different cockpit and flight controls than somebody that's flying like a Boeing 737 for United Airlines, right? Those are two very different missions. And so how do we optimize the cockpit and all the systems for those missions? That's what a test pilot does. I was a helicopter pi test pilot in the Army. Uh, and then I came to NASA in 2013. I had eight people in my class, which is not very many when you think that we had over 6,000 applicants. So that's another thing I wanna tell you guys. Those odds are really not good. And I knew that going into it. So when I put in my application, I thought, you know, that's okay. At least I got to the point where I, I'm eligible to be selected. And then I met all these other people that were applying and I thought, oh my gosh, they're all amazing. Um, but I got selected. And so what I want you guys to remember is that no matter what your goal is, no matter how hard it seems, somebody's going to get selected, right? And why shouldn't it be you? Uh, and so I hope that you set your goals high, and then I hope you take a really realistic path along the way. Working at NASA has really absolutely been a dream come true. It's so much fun working with a group of people focused on a mission that is so challenging every day and that is so meaningful you know, when we explore space, we don't just do it for ourselves. We do it for all of humanity. We do it for the good of the Earth and for the good of the solar system. And that's really exciting to be part of. I get to work with astronauts and uh, engineers and scientists and flight controllers from all over the world in all different countries. And we have one common goal. It really is the best of humanity. Um, 
And uh, so I flew, uh, or I became an astronaut in 2013. I flew to space in 2018, and I got to live aboard the International Space Station for six and a half months. And that was really incredible. Uh, the International Space Station is, as you may have learned at, uh, at Youth Day, it's about the size of a football field. It's huge, right? And it's like a four or five bedroom house uh, on the living size. But then the actual structure is about the size of a football field. And inside of that structure, we have electrical systems and plumbing systems and heat generation and heat rejection. And then we also have like all the creature comforts that you have in your own house, right? Like we have a bathroom and we have a kitchen and we have to keep it clean. And so a lot of the training that we do for astronauts is to take care of all of those systems because we can't just call an electrician, we can't just call a plumber. And so while I came up through engineering, what I had to do when I got to NASA, I had to really broaden my experience. And so that's something that you can think about as, long as, as you go through your career is if, if being an astronaut is something you want to do, think about not only what you're passionate and you're really good at, but also how are you going to get outside of your comfort zone? How are you going to do something that maybe you're not so good at? Maybe you need to challenge yourself to fail a little bit or try something new or get a little bit uncomfortable. Go live in a tent with a group of people in the mountains for a little bit or go scuba diving or challenge yourself in such a way that uh, that kind of gets you outside of your everyday and makes you work with teams. Um, those are all really important aspects that we look for when we select new astronauts is not only like how good you are at your job and what skills can you bring, but also the breadth of experience that you have and also how you do those things. It's not just what you do, but it's also how you do it. Here at NASA, you've probably already seen, we are always working in a team. We, can, we cannot do any of this by ourselves, okay? When I sat on top of a rocket in December of 2018 and I launched to the International Space Station, I relied on so many people and it was so humbling to me to sit on that rocket and know that my life was in the hands of engineers that I had never met and from all different countries and I trusted them. That's teamwork. When we had issues come up on the space station that we had to solve, it took everybody to try to solve those problems. And, uh, and you know, I didn't have the right answer a lot of times. And somebody would look at me and say, hey, Ann, I have a better way of doing that. And you know, it goes, hey, yeah, you know what? Your, your idea is good. And so when you're working on teams, I want you to think about that too. How do you make the people around you better? Okay, uh, it's great to work on a team where everybody is devoted to everybody else's success, a team like NASA. And hopefully um, in the near future, um, hopefully you've heard the word Artemis, uh, and that is we're gonna go back to the moon. Um, you've probably heard your parents and your grandparents talking about the moon walks in the 1960s. Well, it's time for us to go back to the moon. We're gonna take new technologies. We're gonna land in a different way than we've ever landed. We're gonna set up a, a permanent lunar base this time, kind of like the space station. So the lunar base that we're gonna start building this decade, some of you could be living on here in uh, 20 or 30 years. So that's really exciting, think about that. I could be going to build your house pretty soon. Um, so we're really hoping that, uh, that you join us. And maybe you're sitting out there in the audience and you're thinking, gosh, um, I don't really want to do engineering or science, but I really love the NASA mission. There's so many other careers at NASA outside of engineering and science. Like I bet that you have interacted with a lot of educators. Maybe you really like teaching. Maybe you're passionate about communicating science, okay? Us engineers aren't always great at communicating what we do and how we do it. And so we need people that can tell our story. Maybe that's your role. Maybe you're an excellent photographer or videographer. The only way that you've ever seen space shuttle launches or space station dockings or Soyuz landings and launches, astronauts doing their work is because there's people that can take the pictures, make the videos and share it with you all. So whatever you're interested in, if you're interested in the NASA mission, we can find a home for you. So I hope that, uh, I hope that you come and uh, join us at NASA one day. So if I can leave you with anything, uh, it's this. I want you to set your goals high. I want you to look at the path it's gonna take to get there. I want you to get out of your comfort zones and challenge yourselves. And I want you to work together. Always think about making the people around you better because the best teams are diverse teams that are dedicated to the mission and dedicated to the people around them. And if you'd like to come work with us at NASA someday, I hope you really think about it. So thank you again for joining us at NASA Langley for Youth Day and enjoy your journey. Remember that every big journey starts with a single step and maybe some of you have taken that step today. Take care.